Hi guys. For the past 11 years or so, I've had this little notebook where I've been keeping notes on anything related to beauty. Basically notes on how to have healthy skin and healthy hair. And these notes have always kind of just been for my own reference. If I ever heard or read or was told some great beauty advice that resonated with me that I wanted to remember, I jotted it down and I kept it in here. And today I'm going to share with you what I think are the most important things that are in here about hair care and hair health. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you might be like, wait, this is a little bit off topic from usual, but it's actually kind of related because I decided to make this video after decluttering some expired toiletries and hair care products recently with clients, which I'll tell you more about in point number one. And if you haven't seen my videos, my name is Mika and I'm a writer and a professional organizer. I'm currently writing a book series on how to have good vibes in your home. And I'm currently working on the decluttering book. As I write, I share some of what I've written for the week on this channel. So this is one of the things that I wrote about this week. And I don't know if I'll actually include it in the decluttering book, but if not, I'll write it into the self care book that I'll eventually write as part of this series. So I know that hair can vary greatly by individual and these notes that I wrote in this notebook are basically for myself about my own hair. So just pick and choose what's relevant to you. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about in here like nutrition and scalp massages and oils can be beneficial for a lot of people but also be sure to check for any allergies and do patch tests beforehand. So just that disclaimer up front. So the first category is letting go of expired hair care products, minimizing the overuse of hair care products, and ingredients to watch out for. Let's talk about expired hair care products first. I've been a professional organizer for almost eight years now, and over time you start to see trends. Every home that I've gone into where someone has a lot of expired hair care products always has complaints about their hair health in general whether the complaint be hair breakage or thinning or frizziness or dryness or damaged hair in general. Then after we clear their expired products, it usually takes about six months or a year, sometimes longer, but their hair health and sometimes even the thinning improves drastically. I made an entire video about decluttering expired toiletries with guidelines and advice, which I'll link at the end of this video. But basically you can refer to the batch number and then check with checkfresh.com or checkcosmetic.net to see how long that product has left. I'm not affiliated with either of those websites, I just find them really useful. And sometimes those websites don't work for certain brands, so what I started doing this year was just taking a sharpie and writing down my open date of my product. It's easy and it's inconspicuous and then you know how long you've had it open for. Sometimes with toiletries it gets tricky because the packaging still looks great but then the product could be years old and preservatives only last so long. So it really is best to use up your toiletries before their expiration dates. And in regards to this, recently within the last eight months or so, I work with three different clients, all amazing women, Kim, Beth, and Cindy. And they each had a lot of hair care products and a lot of expired products in their bathrooms. So we cleared the expired products and it was hefty bag after hefty bag full. And then we donated some of the products that weren't expired or weren't open. So we then brought the products that we kept in their bathrooms down to what they would regularly use. And I've seen each of them recently and all three of their hair has improved so much. So in fact, I had told them that I have this notebook and that I would share with them what I know about natural hair care and holistic hair care and the tips that I've picked up over the years and during my travels. And that's actually why I'm making this video. Instead of emailing the three of them separately, I thought I would just make this video and share all my tips with all of you. So, the benefit to being mindful about expiring products is that you can save money and you can save space. If you only buy what you could use up in an allotted amount of time, you buy less. So instead of buying a lot of products because they will expire, you can buy less and even maybe better quality and then you don't have to shop as much or buy as much. 
And keep in mind that quality doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. I think that quality products come at all different price points. I also think that it's best to minimize the overuse of hair care products. A lot of products have chemicals and additives that can strip away natural oils, lead to buildup in the hair, and these things can lead to dryness and breakage. I used to use more products, but now that I'm in homes and I get to see a lot of private things like what hair care products are in bathrooms and what clients' regimens are and who complains and who doesn't, I learned a lot. And although there are always exceptions, over time there's this like evident correlation that I spotted where the clients who use a lot of products in their hair and have done so for a long time have more hair health complaints and concerns. So I think that you want to avoid overloading your hair with products if you can. So also, in my later 20s, I sold almost everything that I owned and I went to go travel the world. It wasn't that simple and there's a backstory to it that I'll eventually share in my videos, but during the travels I made friends with locals and other travelers from all around the world, and a lot of these notes that are in this book actually came from those travels or during the travels. So you wouldn't know it now, but I lived nomadically for over three years, for the most part with a carry-on bag and sometimes with the surfboard. During the travels, there is something interesting that I noticed about hair <laughs> that in the remote parts of the world where there isn't an abundance of hair care available, women and men would use stuff from their kitchen or simple things and their hair was strong and lush and nourished and healthy. So I love hair care products. I think that they could be so much fun, but this had a huge influence on me not to use very many. That's part of the reason that I got so interested in simple DIY type hair care. And I use a few products, but for the most part, uh, I do what I'm going to share with you in this video to keep my hair healthy. Lastly, in this category, before we move on to the fun stuff, it might be good to maybe avoid or minimize certain ingredients that are associated with hair damage and hair loss. There are some ingredients that have raised concerns and I don't actually know how concerning they are, but here is a list that I have written down these are common ingredients that might be associated with hair loss or hair damage. And I just looked at my shampoo and I was like, oh, great, it has two of these. But I'll move on, but you can pause the video if you'd like to take a better look at this ingredient list. There's actually a YouTuber that I found who I like his videos and his name is FitTuber. I'll link a couple videos uh, in the description, but I really like some of what he talks about and he, he talks about this stuff and he knows a lot. But uh, I just bought something called Retha and then Amla and then Shikakai. And I'm going to use these three ground up as shampoo for the next couple of months and see if it's any better than my current shampoo that has the chemicals in it. So now moving on to using teas and coffees in your hair and they can work as natural toners and they also have some other benefits. So first, if you have blonde hair or if you have highlights that are turning a little bit brassy, you can put chamomile tea as a rinse or spray into your hair Chamomile tea has a lightening effect because of the natural compounds. It will alleviate brassiness and enhance bright and blonde hair. It also adds shine and moisture to hair and chamomile tea is rich in antioxidants so it can protect hair from oxidative stress and then also free radical and environmental damage. Chamomile tea is pretty for a natural subtle sun-kissed look. And with chamomile tea, I wrote it down to keep it in your hair for about 15 minutes to one hour. Now, if you're a brunette, black tea has tannins that can darken and enrich brown tones. So black tea will enhance the color in your hair more than coffee will, and we'll get to coffee next, but this is because of the tannins. 
So the color enhancement, if you use black tea as toner in your hair, it'll be more noticeable and more vibrant with black tea than if you put coffee in your hair. The tannins will also smooth the hair cuticles, so hair is shinier and less frizzy. Black tea also has antioxidants that can protect the hair from environmental damage and free radicals. And there are also natural oils in black tea that can moisturize hair. So when you put black tea in your hair, it will enhance the natural shine and add color and depth to your hair. And it can also condition and strengthen the hair so there's less breakage. Now, you've probably heard of dyeing hair with coffee, which is an age-old remedy. So there are some benefits to putting coffee on the hair because coffee stimulates hair growth and adds shine, and it also darkens and tones hair. The caffeine in coffee can help to improve blood circulation in the scalp, which can promote hair growth, and then maybe also help to reduce hair loss. Coffee also has antioxidants that can help protect hair from environmental stressors and free radicals. And in terms of color, we talked about how black tea has tannins, so it's more noticeable in the toning of hair, like with a rich brown tone, but coffee's effect is more subtle. Coffee also has natural pigments that create these subtle low lights or highlights in brunettes. So you'll probably want to use a dark roast or espresso or even instant coffee when you dye your hair with coffee. But the trick is to brew it very strong. The longer that you keep it in, the more intense that the color will be. Each of these, whether it be the, well, actually chamomile tea, I'm not so sure, but I know that black tea and then coffee, each of these, like it fades with subsequent washes. So it's not like permanent dye. So it'll last like maybe a week or two. So you just have to keep doing it if you like the results. How to put the tea and coffee into your hair. So there's a few different ways to put this in your hair. The first method is kind of an unlikely method, but I'm just gonna tell it to you anyways, is that you can put the tea or coffee in a basin or a bowl or a bucket and then dunk your head into it. I actually have a friend that does this, but it just sounds so uncomfortable. Second, you could stand in the shower and pour the tea or the coffee over your hair as a rinse. Then optionally put on a shower cap. And of course, before you put it on your hair, you wanna let the tea or the coffee cool. And then the next methods are how I usually do it. I find them much more simple and convenient. But the third method that you can do to put tea or coffee into your hair is that you can use a spray bottle. So you can spray the tea or coffee in your hair and then use your hands to make sure that it's evenly distributed. Sometimes I even use a paddle brush, but I think that might not actually be good to brush your hair when it's wet, so that's probably bad advice. But you can use your hands and then just kind of massage it into your hair to make sure that it's evenly distributed. Fourth, you can add it to your regular conditioner. So you can take some conditioner and put it in a cup or a bowl and then mix in your coffee or your tea. Then you step into your shower and apply it to your hair. So you wanna make sure that your hair is saturated and so you wanna massage it into your scalp. Optionally, you can put on the shower cap. The fifth option is that you can add it to your hair mask. Often I'll pour a strong cup of espresso into my hair mask and mix it. Or sometimes I'll use instant coffee and then mix it in. A few side notes. For coffee, you want to put it all over your hair, but you want to focus on your roots and massage it into your hair, especially if you're looking for hair growth. If it's tea, then you want to focus more so on your hair instead of your scalp, and then just make sure it has all over coverage. And coffee can get, well, coffee and tea, it can get really messy. So protect the area and also your clothes. That's why I think the spray bottle is the best method because it's convenient and effective, but it's way less messy to apply the liquid to your hair, especially like once you get used to doing it. But I still always apply it inside the shower just because it ends up getting all over the place and it, it really does get messy. Next is a rice water rinse. So I want to tell you about this super easy nourishing rinse for the hair. It's also good for your skin too. 
So this wasn't in my notebook, but I wanted to share it with you because it's just something that I've known since I was a kid. But whenever I wash rice, I save the water and then I either pour it over my hair as a rinse or spray it into my hair. And then sometimes I also wash my face with it at night. If I wash my face with rice water, I pat it in and then I don't rinse it off with water. I leave it on as you would a moisturizer or toner. So I'm half Japanese and I don't know why, but one of my most vivid memories from when I was a kid with my grandmother was her teaching me in the kitchen how to wash rice. I don't know why, but I just, it's one of my best memories with her, if that's weird. But she was teaching me to wash the rice till the water runs clear. And then I remember her, she was the one that told me that you should save the rice water and you could use it on your skin and your hair and that geishas used to use it to wash their faces but if you do it once in a while it can really strengthen and add shine to your hair and the rice water has protein in it and among other things so you don't want to do it too often so I wouldn't put a rice water rinse in my hair mm. Probably once every two weeks is fine. Maybe even once a week, but I would just do it once every two weeks. Otherwise, you might overload your hair. So the next beneficial thing is a scalp massage. During the time I was traveling, I spent a lot of time in Bali. And I rented a house there for a while and an apartment there for a while, and I just loved it. Anyways, there's a tradition there that the women do, which is called a hair bath. With the hair bath, you go to the salon or a shop and someone washes your hair and then puts on a nourishing mask and then massages your scalp. This stimulates the blood circulation and it releases tension and is also relaxing. But my friends that are locals there swear by it. And that's where I first learned the importance of a scalp massage. So scalp massage is great to encourage hair growth and it's also said to have benefits for maintaining healthy hair follicles because it increases the blood circulation in your scalp which helps to promote nutrient delivery to your hair follicles. If you're doing this at home, you can use your fingertips to massage your scalp in circular motions for a few minutes a day or you could have your spouse or friend do it for you once a week and exchange head massages. There's that one head massager that feels really good. And I recently bought this for myself off of Amazon and actually bought a black one too, but I don't know where it is, so I'll have to overlay it. So the black one, I really, really like it. I use it on my head while I'm reading or watching TV and this white one has these red and blue lights. Here it goes vibrating. Wait, where's the light? Has blue light and then red light, which I don't know if it's showing up on the camera. But it also, it feels good, but I really like the other one. The other one doesn't have lights, but it uh, massages your head very nicely. And I'll link them down below if you're looking for a head massager and you want a better look at them. I do recommend the black one. Next is foods to eat for healthy hair follicles and healthy hair. So nutrition plays a big role in healthy skin, hair, nails, body, and well, our overall health in general. And our hair's health and beauty starts from within. So eating a well-balanced diet can make a big difference in the hair that's on our heads. So first and foremost is to try to eat a well-balanced and nutritious diet that will provide you with essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. A well-rounded diet generally includes various whole foods, so fruits and veggies and lean proteins, whole grains, and healthy fats. And drinking water and staying hydrated is also important for your hair, skin, and overall health. Sometimes we can get really busy and we're rushing about and we don't take time for proper nutrition or we skimp on it or sometimes we're stressed and we reach for something that's quick and easy and often loaded with sugar. But if we have a poor diet lacking in nutrients, then our hair will probably reflect that. And 
There's a lot of factors to hair, but nutrition is a really big component because it can impact overall hair health, hair follicles, hair growth, and even the production of pigment. So anyways, it's great to have a handful of foods in mind that are good to eat that can help us increase the chances of healthy hair growth and strength and to remember to incorporate kind of more of a balanced diet. So here are some specific foods that are good for healthy hair and for strengthening hair follicles. So eggs, because they are rich in protein and biotin, these are essential nutrients for hair growth and strength. Fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, they are good sources of omega-3 fatty acids, which nourish the scalp and support healthy hair. Spinach has vitamins and minerals like iron, folate, vitamins A and C, and these are all good for healthy hair follicles. Also seeds and nuts, flax seeds and chia seeds and almonds all, for example, contain omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E and zinc which support a healthy scalp and also promote hair growth. Sweet potatoes are rich in beta carotene and sweet potatoes convert to vitamin A in the body, promoting healthy hair growth. Also Greek yogurt, which is high in protein and vitamin B5, which strengthens hair follicles and nourishes the scalp. Berries, so blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries, they have antioxidants and vitamins that support hair health and the antioxidants protect against oxidative stress. And lean poultry, so chicken and turkey have protein which is essential for hair growth and hair strength. I know people are unique and have different dietary preferences and it varies by taste buds and then there's also vegetarians and vegans and the keto diet and meat eaters and then there are also allergies that come into play. So I'm just sharing with you what I had written down in the notebook for myself, but you can pick and choose what you're interested in to eat out of those foods. There are also some foods that may help with slowing down or combating gray hair. Graying is a natural process, but certain nutrients might support hair health and possibly slow down the graying process. And this is because certain nutrient deficiencies such as being deficient in vitamin B12, copper, and certain antioxidants can affect hair health, including graying and growth. There are no specific foods that have specifically been shown to reverse gray that I know of, but these nutrients might be beneficial. So vitamin B12, foods rich in vitamin B12 such as meat and steak, fish such as tuna, salmon and trout, shellfish such as clams, eggs, fortified cereals, they might help to optimize the health of hair pigment cells. And for vegan options, the almond and coconut and oat milks often are fortified with B12. And copper plays a role in melanin production. And again, melanin gives hair its color. So foods like meats, tofu, nuts, sesame and sunflower seeds, chocolate and shellfish, they're all good sources of copper. There's also avocados, potatoes, mushrooms, chickpeas, and also antioxidant rich foods. So consuming foods high in antioxidants can help offset oxidative stress and then support hair health. So fruits and vegetables, they're high in antioxidants, berries, citrus fruits, spinach, kale, and then there's also biotin, also known as vitamin B7, and it's important for optimal hair health. So eggs, nuts and seeds, and sweet potatoes, legumes, so beans, lentils, peas, and soybeans, sunflower seeds, sweet potatoes, mushrooms, bananas, and broccoli. Those are just some examples. And then Hair turns gray because there's a buildup of hydrogen peroxide in the hair follicles, which blocks the melanin that's needed for color in the hair. Some studies suggest that a decline in catalase, which is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide in the body, may contribute to the graying of hair. So foods like broccoli, kale, cabbage, and other cruciferous vegetables have catalase. Also pineapple, potatoes, cabbage, garlic, watermelon, peaches, 
pear, mushrooms, leeks, onions, zucchini, kale, radish, sunflower seeds, carrots, and cucumber. And that's just what's on my list, and surely there are many more. The next category is to manage stress and get enough sleep. A consistent sleep schedule and getting enough sleep is important for hormone balance and regulation and bodily repair. I also invested in a silk pillowcase a few years back, and it's supposed to help with wrinkles and hair. But mostly, I kind of just like how it feels. It feels very luxurious. And if you get a silk pillowcase, you just have to be careful when washing it because silk is delicate and you want to take care of it so that you can enjoy it for years and even decades to come. I love taking care of things and then using them for a long time and I think that this was worth the investment just for how it feels like on my face uh, at night. I'll link that below too if I find it. Then it'll be in the description below just so you could take a look at it. So as you sleep, your body goes into repair mode, including the restoration of your hair. So it depends on the person, but they say that seven to eight hours per night is optimal. And chronic stress can disrupt hormone balance, which can affect hair follicles and hair health. So it's good to manage stress. And a few ways to do so are practice saying no, exercise regularly, a 10 minute or an hour walk a day, meditate, and then have fun hobbies that relax you, you know, exercise compassion and self-care and positive self-talk, and let go of those voluntary stressful relationships. Stress is linked to hair loss, and high stress levels can disrupt the hair growth cycle, which can lead to hair thinning. And there's a saying about how most problems are in our heads. There's a quote that says, I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened by Mark Twain. So anyways, it's really important to manage stress. So next are some oils that you can use on your hair that are known to be beneficial to hair health. There are some oils that are known to support healthy hair and hair growth, and here are a few great options. The first is castor oil. It's known to help with hair loss and hair growth. So castor oil also, I heard, but it's not obviously been proven that it could help with gray hairs. So anyways, castor oil has several essential nutrients like vitamin E, minerals, proteins, and fatty acids, including ricinolic acid. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but these nutrients can provide nourishment to the hair follicles and promote healthier hair growth. It also moisturizes and has antimicrobial properties and massaging castor oil onto the scalp can help stimulate blood circulation to the hair follicles and then that improved blood flow can help the hair follicles receive more essential nutrients and oxygen and this could promote hair growth. Now rosemary oil seems to be a popular remedy for hair thinning and a study shows that, and the study, I'll link it in the description below, but that it might have positive effects on hair growth and help with hair loss. So there was the study done which shows that rosemary oil had potential in stimulating hair follicles, which might promote hair growth, and it might also help reduce inflammation and balance oil production on the scalp. And then rosemary oil might also have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, which can help reduce scalp inflammation and oxidative stress, helping to maintain a healthier scalp and then a uh, environment for healthier hair growth. It might also help with DHT inhibition. DHT is a hormone that plays a role in hair loss, especially if you're genetically predisposed to hair loss. So some studies suggest that rosemary oil might inhibit the activity of DHT, which can slow down hair loss in some cases. So if you use rosemary oil, you want to make sure to dilute it with a carrier oil because it's really strong and potent to put on your skin alone. So you definitely want to mix it or dilute it, otherwise it can cause an irritation. When you do dilute it, you can just mix three drops of rosemary oil to one tablespoon of the carrier oil that you choose. So 
mix it into your carrier oil and then you can massage it into your scalp and some good carrier oils are jojoba oil jojoba oil i'm not sure how to pronounce that and then coconut oil almond oil or grapeseed oil and because rosemary oil can be an irritant do a patch test first also it's important to use high quality pure essential oils and also the carrier oils it's worth it for what you're going to put on your scalp so the another oil that when i was in india amla oil was huge there and while i was spending time there i did use amla oil a lot and then in morocco argan oil is very big and the men and the women swear by argan oil for beauty. So Madeline, if you're watching this video, please feel free to comment because I think you know a lot more about this than me. But I do know that argan oil is hydrating. It has antioxidants. It has vitamin E, linoleic acid, and it's moisturizing and nourishing. So when I was there, I would put it on my skin and then I'd also rub a little bit of the argan oil between my palms and I gently kind of just pat my ends and then put it on my frizzies and flyaways. Also for flyaways and light frizziness, I sometimes use coconut oil and sometimes castor oil, but I put the smallest touch of it on my palm and then I warm it up between my hands and then lightly go over my frizz with it. So. With oils in general, individual responses will vary and you might want to do additional research if you decide to implement these oils into your routine. Also patch tests for allergies, just in case. So anyways, those are some fun oils to try. The next category is five DIY hair masks that you can make in your own kitchen. So sometimes it's so nice to treat your hair to some nutrient rich hair masks. So you can buy hair masks or make them at home. And there are some great natural ingredients in your kitchen cabinets that can strengthen and condition and nourish hair. So I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite go-tos. The first one is banana and honey and coconut oil. So you mash up a ripe banana and then mix it with a tablespoon of honey and then two tablespoons of coconut oil or coconut milk and then apply it to your hair and really focus on the lengths and the ends. I put this on for like 20 to 30 minutes and then I rinse it out. And this moisturizes, nourishes, and it also adds shine. Another mask that I really like is basically yogurt and egg, but beat an egg and then mix it with half a cup of plain yogurt. And you can apply this for 20 to 30 minutes and then rinse it out of your hair with cool water and then it will strengthen and condition your hair. Uh, if you rinse it out with warm or hot water, it'll cook the egg into your hair. <laughs> That's happened to me before a long time ago, stupid mistake. So lukewarm or cool water. Another mask is aloe vera and castor oil. So mix two tablespoons of aloe vera gel with one tablespoon of castor oil and you can massage this into your scalp and it's nourishing for the scalp and it hydrates the hair. Then there's also coconut oil, honey, aloe vera, and egg yolk. So take about three tablespoons of coconut oil, one tablespoon of raw honey, one teaspoon of aloe vera gel, and then an egg yolk. Mix it all together and then massage it into your head and scalp. Then cover your hair with a shower cap for about 30 minutes and then rinse your hair with cool water and then shampoo. This mask will add shine and it'll moisturize and it'll nourish your hair. Now you can also do a yogurt, egg, honey, and olive oil mask. So take half a cup of plain yogurt, one egg, one tablespoon of honey, and then one to two tablespoons of olive oil. So combine it all up well and then focus this mask really on your ends. You put it all over your hair, but focus on the ends and then cover your hair with a shower cap and then leave it on for like 30 minutes or so. And then rinse your hair with cool water. This will leave your hair feeling so healthy and so soft. So those are my tips. I hope that you found some of this helpful. 
If you have any tips or favorite hair masks or stories of your own, please feel free to share them below. I'm also linking that video about decluttering expired toiletries here. And I hope that you found this video fun, interesting, and informative. If you did, could you please hit the like button as it helps more people to find my channel and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.